Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Levy from Genesis County Office Indonesia. So uh, today, I would like to share our experience in doing the HIV investment case analysis and sustainable HIV response uh, through UHC. Uh, we work together uh, in doing the transition plan uh, analysis with the World Bank and other partners with the University of Indonesia also. Uh, when we have three components for doing the analysis, first of all, the allocative efficiency, uh, HIV UHC integration, and financial sustainability. And uh, this is the area of work uh, where you need uh, good uh, help. And we are doing the investment case uh, together with MOH and linkages at HI and also uh, with the university. Mm. Okay, this is the, in, uh, the result of Indonesia investment case to MH through the fast track uh, strategy. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, how we are doing the investment case, we are doing the two, we call it uh, eight epidemic model. Uh, as we know, uh, in Indonesia, the HIV epidemic is still expanding and the resources are very scarce and we still need to prioritize our investment. And then well, what are the basis of our strategy to uh, to do this analysis. First, we are using our national strategy and action plan. We also uh, base uh, the analysis on the epidemiological profile. And then uh, we have some scenarios uh, to do the investment case analysis. And then uh, when we are doing the AIDS epidemic model, we have uh, <coughs> some data that we input to the tool. Uh, we are using uh, size estimate data, risk behavior, HIV prevalence, and also we are inputting population serve, cough rate, effectiveness, and the unit cost as well. And then uh, after inputting this data, we get some output from the analysis. We have the source of new infection, epidemic trends, and also uh, we have uh, some impact data, like infection averted, life safe, and comparative cost. Uh, this is the data from Indonesia that HIV epidemic is still accelerating. Uh, we can see this is the reported number, still very low that we can find until now, is below uh, 100. Uh, thousand, the reported number of new HIV infection. But if we see the estimate number, it's uh, sorry, it's higher. Yeah, it's now about six hundred twenty thousand. And uh, when we did the analysis, we also use uh, some data like behavior data. The this is the uh, sorry sorry. This is uh, the HIV prevalence. We also use the HIV prevalence. Uh, we have uh, reducing epidemic uh, among the Tiwi and stabilizing among the warrior, a bit increase. And for the blue one is among the direct homosexual test. And also in the direct bit reducing. So actually uh, we are doing uh, Indonesia is now in stabilizing epidemic, but if we are not careful, uh, we also could have some increase in some people. Like here, uh, this is the trend in 27 to 2015, and this is the trend between 29 and 2015. And we also analyze uh, some uh, data related to consistent condom use into the model. Yeah, as we see, uh, although we can see, for example, the condom use among MSM is already high, but if we check, maybe the casual uh, condom use among them is still low. Yeah? Because uh, 
why uh, the epidemic among MSM is expanding if uh, the condom is only high. So we need to be careful. And this is the result from the baseline of the model. We can see that 25% of new infec uh, infection in HIV are occurring among MSM and um, male sex workers. Yeah, this is the distribution of new infection in 2015. And we also entered the data from the coverage and we can see that most of the coverage is still below 40%. Yeah, the coverage is still very low. And this is also, uh, we can see the cascade of the treatment. Uh, there is still a leakage between outreach, yeah, uh, and the diagnosed and the ART coverage. So, uh, until now, the people which they don't really uh, brought to the HIV services to be tested and to get treatment. So there is a, what's called, weekly uh, lack of linkages between uh, the testing and the treatment. And also, uh, the investment in the response in Indonesia is not growing fast enough to meet the need. So you can see. This is the, the resources need by the HIV national response. But this is actually the estimated total resources. This is the available funding, still around 100 million US dollar. But actually, if we want to end the epidemic, we need this amount. So there is a big resource gap. Uh, and then we after the analysis, we get the result. This is the impact of the new infection. We try uh, different scenarios. Uh, this is the baseline, uh, the situation now. And we compare, if we want to reach the fast track target in 2020, we can actually reduce the new infection by 72%. But unfortunately, since our current coverage is very low, our government realized that we cannot reach the fast track target in 2020. So uh, we are doing also some scenario using realistic target where uh, the government think we can reach the 1990-90 target in 2027. And this is for all population. That's why the government now uh, start policy for test and treat all. Hopefully this year, sorry, or next year. Uh, we can test and report, but still step by step in some priority district. Uh, this is the resource need if we need uh, the, uh, the funding for the ART. Still also a lot if we want to do a fast track in 2027, we need a lot of funding for the ART. And also for the prevention, this is uh, the total resource need. Uh, for prevention and treatment. And if you need some more detail how much we need uh, the funding for different scenarios, uh, this is the amount of funding we need for 2027 fast track. And then uh, we have some analysis. If we, in, sorry. If we invest 4.4 billion uh, uh, for prevention, we will uh, we get the return uh, of investment about 12 billion. Yeah, so it is important to invest in the prevention area. And then uh, by investing 4.4 billion to the scenario of the fast track uh, for the all, uh, all population, we can save 8 million healthy life years. And then uh, we also could save 5 uh, billion in treatment costs, and we can save 11 uh, or, or 12 billion in total, yeah? plus contribution to GDP. Nah, uh, 
after seeing all the result, uh, we already actually uh, our government have some policy to integrate the universal uh, sorry HIV into the universal health coverage, and then uh, this is the roadmap of the universal health coverage. By 2019, we would like to have 100% of the coverage, and now already. Uh, 70%, 20%. but we would like all the cap also included and all people living with HIV will be served also by ESC. And then uh, this is the JKN, yeah, as, sorry, this is uh, about 70%, 70% of the population, remember, uh, and then uh, the target beneficiaries, uh, we, we hope uh, the cap now already receive uh, the benefit. And, uh, but we have some challenges that large size of informality, as we know, our cap, they don't have, the, most of them have don't have ID card. And the self inspected health condition are excluded from uh, the JKN. So, uh, as you know, in Indonesia, IDUs cannot access the UHC because government thought they do their, their staff harm by themselves, so they don't have the right to get the benefit. Uh, this is uh, the area that we can work together in the policy, but I don't know, yeah, uh, the progress, because uh, I know IAC also work on a lot of ways. But let's uh, hear the update from Edo. Uh, okay, uh, two more slides. Uh, I would like to propose some idea to think uh, out of the box. Like Thailand, uh, Jonah said that the community health service already covered by the USC. Uh, I hope in Indonesia one day also could do that. Because um, we, we have some example that in the previous program, uh, the outreach program could be linked to the Puskesmas program. So one day we, uh, I would like to see that the community health service could be integrated to the universal health coverage. Because now although, although the prevention program already included in the JKN, but some other uh, service element like condom, IC material, uh, and then MMT, NSP, uh, has not been in, included. So uh, this is the priority action, including application to the USC. We need to mobilize sustainable resource. We need to integrate prevention and treatment into universal health coverage, address the key gaps and bottleneck in the health system, strengthen uh, strategic information at the local level, and focus investment on gaps, and scale up and improve the quality of coverage. Thank you so much.